Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are excited to have our next guest joining us here today live on the Zoomcast as well as the podcast. And she's a life coach, coaching with Sharon. And uh, she really is helping so many people ditch alcohol for the life of your dreams. So coaching with Sharon, that's spelled S-H-U-R-O-N-E dot com. And Sharon Hills joins us live here today. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to have you back. Are you currently in Utah still? Yes, I'm still in Salt Lake City, Utah. Beautiful. Hiking lots of mountains. Oh, that's wonderful. We're going to talk about, you know, those things help people as well, right? The positive mindset. And uh, we got to learn to take care of our bodies, our insides, our outsides. And I know you've had your own share of experiences, which brought you here today. So let me start off by having you just introduce yourself. Uh, Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes, my name is Sharon Hills. And where to start the story, right? <laughs> I guess I guess I'll start when I was a when I was a child. I was never taught, like most of us, how to handle my emotions, and uh, that was something that uh, was never mentioned and never taught to me. So I I uh, had a couple of things happen to me in my childhood that were a little rough, and I didn't know how to handle them. And so later on in life, when I discovered alcohol, it was like this magical savior in a way for me uh, that allowed me to to escape my emotions and to not have to deal with them. And I think for a lot of people, we find ourselves in that place where, where we start using alcohol more and more to cover up how we're feeling or to not feel and to escape our emotions. And And of course, it took quite a long time for me to get to the point where alcohol became, I was addicted to it physically. Um, That was a a process. Um, But basically I found alcohol when I was in college and I thought that it was the answer to all of my problems. And uh, it was fun for a couple of years. And then I, I realized that I had this like, like not problem, but that I really loved alcohol. And that is when I found somebody that also loved alcohol even more than me and drank a little bit more than me so that I wouldn't have to feel guilty about it. Um, and I found my husband and he he and I drank together and we ended up um, drinking just at our house and just isolating. It was no longer fun. We were um, drinking every day. And I ended up drinking about 30 beers every day just to get by. Just, um, I remember, I remember I I kept a job, thankfully, throughout this time. Um, And it was only because I worked for my dad, to be honest with you. But I would come into work and I would have to, I would have to have like six beers before I could like not shake to write out checks. Um, And so I was pretty pretty addicted to it um eventually and and I thought I thought that I kind of figured it out figured out how to make it work um if I if I didn't drink hard alcohol I was okay and I could still kind of function mm-hmm. and if I could have a couple throughout the day then I wouldn't be shaky um but I came home one day and my husband was working nights he'd figured out a job where he could drink too as a security guard Um, but I, but I saw my husband standing by our computer one morning and he looked like he was like eight months pregnant and he wasn't a big guy. So I knew something was wrong and I Googled and, uh, and it came up with cirrhosis as being, um, a plausible explanation for this. And, um, and my whole life kind of changed. I, I realized that I hadn't figured it out and this was going to kill me if I continued on this, this way. And, um, and I, I, I spoke briefly about this in our, in our uh, couple of um, episodes ago, yeah. ago, but, but yeah, we, we successfully quit for a little while and then I started drinking again because it wasn't, I wasn't the one with the problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 
and eventually my husband started drinking again too and um and also the doctors told him that he was doing better which was the Uh. worst thing they could ever told him um and yeah because it's so it's so easy to get back into that um, into that pattern into that cycle of drinking especially when you're filled with guilt and shame like I was yeah um, and so, yeah, he, we went back and he eventually did lose his life to alcohol, um, to cirrhosis of the liver, which is what happens um, when we get addicted physically to alcohol. Um, and yeah, he was 44 years old, uh. pretty healthy, um, other than the alcohol, of course. So, yeah, and he drank beer. He didn't really drink hard alcohol. So I like to tell people that it's just a, a um it's a it's a very addictive substance and sometimes we lose sight of that because it's so socially accepted in our society so then um after my husband died i had actually quit drink i'd moved out of our house about a month before that I realized that uh, I didn't. I didn't think we could do it together, and and in that time, I think he got worse, and um, I'm not exactly sure what happened because I wasn't there. But after he, after he um, died, I really everything had already changed when I quit, but that really cemented in my head that I needed to figure this out. And I was worried and nervous that I would go back to drinking too. And so at this point, I started doing all the research. I went to AA. I I read a ton of books and I continue to read all the latest stuff about addiction. And it's just become a passion of mine trying to help people out of this, um, out of this cave, out of this dark place. Well, I commend your story. I appreciate you sharing this with us. And I know it's not easy to talk about. And, you know, I get to see you here face to face today. And I commend you on, you know, not everybody can come to this conclusion and realize it and have this second chance at life. So, um, you know, unfortunately, not for your, you know, for him, for you. uh, But here you are now taking the bad that happened to you. And, helping so many. So, you know, the fact you can really empathize with your clients because you've walked this walk is just, it's beautiful. So we appreciate that. Thank you so much. And um, at this time, I know I just want to make sure we uh, do establish the ways we can contact you before we continue. Could you share the website one more time? Yes, I'd love to. My website is www.coachingwithsharone.com. And again, my name is spelled S-H-U-R-O-N-E. And um, that is where you can find out how to work with me. There's a couple of different ways. And I've also got a webinar coming up next Tuesday at four o'clock Eastern time where people can come talk to me. Um, I'm going to talk about the first step to quitting alcohol and um, you can come ask me questions, anything you want. Um, and also, let's see what else. You can email me at mm-hmm. coachingwithsharone um, at gmail.com. And then my phone number, if you want to reach out to me, is 801-792-4292. Beautiful. And also, you mentioned um, your sister who was kind of inspirational to you, right? She helped you. Um, and also, you mentioned the teachings of Brooke Castillo. Could you share a little bit about that? Yeah. And then the coaching and the podcast and how you got here. Yeah, so so I started um, I started hanging out with a lot of people in AA um, to begin with originally because that's all I could really kind of find in the community um, as far as support went. And AA is awesome for that. I love AA. Um, and then so what happened was my sister had started listening to another podcast, and um, and it was all about kind of. Uh, similar veins of things as uh, I was learning in Alcoholics Anonymous. And so she shared with me one day and we started listening to this coaching, which I'd never really heard about before and thought work. And I instantly fell in love with it. And it took my recovery and the things that I was learning to that next level. And so I'm very grateful for my sister to introducing me to Brooke Castillo, who is my mentor and a, a 
beautiful, wonderful life coach. Um, she's got a very famous podcast called the Life Coach School podcast. And I learned all about how to handle and deal with my emotions from this woman who had gone through some stuff herself and trying to figure out some stuff. And um, and it was so beautiful learning that that I was I was the one. I was the one creating it all and that I could choose and change the way that I was thinking about myself, most importantly, and my life. Um, I had a lot of, of really questionable thoughts about myself and a lot of negative, um, you know, really dark stuff after 15 years of drinking 30 beers a day. You know, my self-talk was pretty bad. And mm-hmm. She helped me out of that and and she awesome. allowed me to see my worth and my value again Beautiful. and to begin to love myself, um, possibly for the first time in my life. And that has really, it, everything changed for me when I, when I learned from her. Oh. Well, thank you for sharing that inspiration. And I also, um, you know, just wanted to ask a question, hope you don't mind, but when, after your husband was diagnosed and he knew he was really that ill, did he eventually stop drinking? Did, was he able to reflect upon anything before he passed about maybe he couldn't, he shouldn't have done this? Or did he have that remorse period at all? Yeah, um, I definitely. And he had tried many times to quit before, too. And, um, and we did quit when he found out he had cirrhosis. Because okay. that's pretty scary, you know, it's a, yeah. a death sentence. Yeah. And um, so we did quit. And I, I don't, because my memory is a little fuzzy around that time. Um, but it was a month or two that we were able to, to not drink. But it is so difficult to do that on your own. Yeah. And, yeah. and without any tools and without any help, it was, we really yeah. just, I, I felt like we, we, that looking back didn't have much of yeah. a chance mm-hmm. and yeah. you know you, you can try and want to to quit and, and really yeah. want it with your whole heart and not be able to if you're physically addicted it's it's a it's a really hard place to get out of well thank you for sharing that I'm just curious because you know some people say they don't realize till the end and it's like I wish I could have would have but that's also inspiring to know that Hey, maybe I should listen to, you know, this man, maybe as you know, it's just, again, I commend you. Yeah. I can only imagine your, your, your loss and what you had to come through. And here you are helping others now with their loss or soon to be loss. Right. So give me some examples yes. of the type of coaching that people, what, what they're going through, please. Yeah. So that's one thing that I really love to be able to help people with is there's a, there's this notion out there this idea that you have to hit rock bottom before you can quit drinking and I don't believe that that is true I just think that people at that point get desperate enough to quit but it would it, it's so great when people are able to recognize that it is creating problems in their lives before they get to that point before they get to the point where they have serious health problems and and things like that that does propel um propel people to quit um eventually and so i love to be able to coach people that are not quite um quite there yet because they still have some spark and some and and really i shouldn't say um that i have a favorite it's i i like coaching anywhere any people from wherever they're at um but i find that a lot of people actually when they are at that bottom place, they're not looking for coaching because they're um, mentally like unable to do that. I don't think I would have been able to to look at myself and my my thoughts necessarily right at the very beginning. So um, when people do come to me that are addicted physically to alcohol, I, lo- I will still talk to, to to them and coach them, but often it's it's a little bit more helpful if they come to me after they've detoxed and gone through that process first. Um, but yeah, as far as specific examples of coaching, um, um, let's see. I 
I have a client right now that I really love, um, and she is pretty new still, but she's um, she's kind of discovering that like she, like the power that she has and the ways in which she's been wrong about herself, um, which is so fun to be a part of and to see the lights turn on and to see people recognize where they may be be believing into stories that aren't true about themselves. And um, for example, she is like a lot of my clients and had labeled herself as a bad person and thought that she was somehow morally wrong or um, there was something wrong with her because she couldn't stop drinking. And it's so nice to be able to let people know that that is not the case and that they are dealing with a substance that is addictive mm -hmm. highly addictive and that is a toxin and yeah. we think that we have this control over it but really it's not um alcohol is so addictive that it has a lot of control over us and it's making decisions for us often that we're not consciously making for ourselves and just uh, showing her that she is not a bad person and mm -hmm. that she is a victim of the substance yes. that has been taught to her and shown that it is fine to drink. I think most yep. of us have been taught that. Um, mm -hmm. I recently read that 90% of adults drink alcohol. And so that's a big number. Yeah. You know, that's that's really a a sign that we have completely embraced alcohol and that it is part of our culture and that it's okay, okay to drink it. But really, uh, from my research and from what I've done, it causes, it's the number one cause of problems and um, death and um, issues when we're looking at drugs and addictive things. Alcohol is the top, the very worst as far as the things that it does to us. And um, I, I want to say too, that addiction to anything they're all very similar and they're and they're they all become problems when mm -hmm. we're using them to cover up our emotions and how we feel so it could be like a, a drug or um even like work or facebook or anything really that gets you out of feeling your emotions um so i do work with other people that or that um, have like drug addictions Sometimes too, it's not just alcohol because they're all so related and so similar. Got it. Well, thank you for sharing that. And also, um, I just um, love hearing, you know, you know how you're helping so many. Now we talk about alcohol as an addiction. Do you also work with others who are addicted to drugs, any type of substance abuse, or uh, is it strictly just those you work with that do have an alcohol problem? Yeah, I mainly work with women that have alcohol problems. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really where my heart is. But I will help anyone that has a problem with any sort of addiction right now. Um, because they, like I said, they're all very similar. And they become issues for us when we don't know how to feel. And we don't know how to handle our emotions. Because if you're anything like me, I was never taught anything about that. And I don't think most of us are. So... You also have a, a first step to quitting alcohol discussion coming up. Uh, to, could you share a little bit about that and how we can find out more about that? Yeah, visit my website, um, www.coachingwithsharon.com to sign up. There's a couple of different spots on, on there to where you can sign up for that. And it's a really, a, I want it to be a little bit of um, teaching and then a discussion about um, the first steps and and helping people because I, I think a lot of what stops people from taking that first step is fear. The fear of what will my life be like without alcohol. I know that for me, that was a big fear. It had been, become such a large, huge part of my life that it had little feelers into all the areas of my life, into my even my work and my um, all my relationships. It had woven in there. And so the first step is really facing that fear and looking at um, what that looks like and, and kind of discovering that we're much stronger than we think we are. Oh, that's amazing. And you are working with those all over, right? Uh, your coaching takes you to all different states, different countries even, I'm sure, right? 
Yes, I coach over Zoom. So that allows me to coach anyone. And what a beautiful thing. Yeah, well, it's it's also beautiful. Get to meet a lot of people, right? Well, like this person on your website said, a few years ago, I met a lady that changed my way of thinking. Sharon took the time to show and explain that I can read, I can stay sober, and I can keep my obesity at bay. With her coaching skills, she has explained how my everyday thoughts could change and change they have. My life is not the same. I truly understand me and me why. Coaching with Sharon has enhanced my life. Thank you. Excuse me. That's just one of the positive uh, testimonials. Uh, did you want to, uh, you know, th- talk about who that is without their name? But anything in particular from that person you recall? Yeah, uh, this is one of my first clients that I worked with. So it's had a special place in my heart, and um, and he wanted to make sure he was worried that he would drink again, maybe. And so he wanted to make sure and and put that into concrete that he could be done forever. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that I teach people. You can you don't ever have to drink again. You don't have to use drugs again if you don't want to. Um, there are other other things, other ways of handling your life. And um, so he came to me for that reason. And once we had kind of um, talked a, a, about that, he mentioned that he was in the process of losing weight. And um, so really, we started talking about that and about food and, and his um, addictions to sugar and how that was impacting him and how to how to get over that. And um, that's another big, huge one for a lot of people um, is sugar. And from my research, sugar is actually just as addictive as cocaine, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. So that, that was too. a hard one. Oh. Yeah. And then a lot of times this happens with people that are in addiction or in recovery from addictions, they'll jump on to another thing. So they'll like quit alcohol, but then they'll start, um, you know, using pain pills or something or uh, switch to a food addiction or something like that. So, so with him, I was able to um, show him how his mind and how his thoughts were impacting that and how that cycle can be stopped by just questioning your thoughts Mm -hmm. and kind of it's interesting our thinking because it seems like it would be kind of a simple thing to do to, to kind of change around the way that we're thinking about things. Um, But about 90% of our thoughts Mm -hmm. are subconscious. They're already delegated back into our midbrain. Like for example, I'm not really thinking about what I'm saying to you because language is delegated to my midbrain where it's like an automatic, um, little program that just runs and most of our thinking is like that too so we have all of these subconscious thoughts about ourselves and about alcohol and drugs and the thing the ways in which they're helping us Mm -hmm. Um, and we can really become deflated and you know we can we can become lost in these stories about ourselves that aren't true like I was I was I was so lost thinking that I was uh, worthless and um, that I was just this complete failure because I couldn't get my life together and I couldn't stop drinking. And I was blaming myself and I was full of guilt and shame. So I really love teaching people how to break that cycle and how to get out of those emotions that are not helpful. (laughs) Well, we have just uh, three minutes left here on the show. How did you want to kind of end off for today for your listeners, for those out there who may be in need of help, uh, suffering with addiction? Yeah, I would love to just tell anybody out there that's suffering with this not to give up and and to, to absolutely you can do this. Mm-hmm. If you want to get out of these um, out of these cycles, there is a way and you are so, so worth it and your life is yeah. worth it. Um, and I know that it is scary. But believe me, my life is a million times better now than it was. And I I could have never imagined, never imagined what was on the other side of this. And and the same thing can can be true for you absolutely too. Just hang in there. 
Perfect. And if we want to reach out one more time, remind us how we could do so. Thank you. Yes, please find me at www.coachingwithsharon.com. And I would love to meet anyone who wants to work with me. Perfect. Thank you so much. A uh, pleasure seeing Thank you, you here. Thank you for your positivity and for sharing your story. And I know it's a painful journey, but it's also bringing you much joy because you're helping so many down the same path you have been. So thank you for that. And you have a fantastic day and even better week. Okay. Thank you. You too. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, please stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knock down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.